Hi, I'm Rebecca, and Fit Old Dog and I are back with more ways for you to tend your plantar fasciitis. Today we're going to be looking at how do you strengthen your arch. Then this could be because you have flat feet or you're just not executing a strong arch support where you're supposed to be absorbing your shock. So we'll be looking at ways to first warm up the body, work your arch, and finally develop it into how you stand and how you walk. Because then distributing your weight is so important. You could have great arches, but if it doesn't distribute right through your foot, you could be landing over and over into one spot in your heel, and there you go, inflammation. So let's start with a warm up. Even though we'll be looking at the arch in the foot, we have a whole system here of muscles that need to be tended. So you could take something like this stick and just a simple roll, even a rolling pin out of your kitchen could do, and we could start to open up the IT band, and I'm just giving you a little bit here to do. You might spend a lot of time and find some tender spots. This whole line that connects up into your knee. We have the outside edges to work. You could take it underneath to get your hamstring. What you're looking for is any spot that's tender because that's pulling on a whole network that transfers down into your foot. So after a good hello to these muscles, warming them all up, getting things hydrated and juicy, we now want to look at opening up the foot so that we can strengthen the arch. But when we stand, what is the part of the arch that you need to be focusing on? So we're going to take a pin here and we're going to draw a line from your ankle straight down. This is where you're going to want to land all of your energy. So how do we start to say hello to it? You could take a ball and begin by just rolling it around, finding all the little spots now this could be a tennis ball, it could be a smaller ball to get in where you can just sort of pulse, pulse, pulse in different places to open up the different areas. You're looking to see if something's tender, but you're trying to find all the ways in which you can start to feel your weight transfer into the foot. Okay, so let's now start to work on strengthening these muscles of your arch. We're going to start with the yoga toes. You can refer back to our other video around the yoga toes to have more of an extensive way of playing with these. But once you have your yoga toes on, you want all the muscles in your foot to start to activate and work. So simple little things like squeezing. I'm going to let my hands also represent what my toes are doing and then spreading. A lot of squeezing and spreading and you can notice here that just by doing that I'm really pulling up, doming at the arch. Spreading. I can play one toe, the other toe and start to feel, hmm, is it more familiar in my foot to turn out, to turn in? Don't be surprised if you're weak here that you might even feel a little cramping. Just stop, rest, massage it out, and know that you've got a lot of yoga toe work to do. So this way of playing, where you're letting the cueing of the spread of the yoga toes and then the squeezing action is starting to strengthen your foot. When you take them off, you want to notice how much more spread and space there is between all of your toes. Sometimes you need to manually help that out. And now, from yoga toes, we go to toe yoga. And you can practice this sitting down and we're going to be taking it up to standing. But as you lift just your big toe, See if you can pull up the arch, keeping all of these toes relaxed and down. With your arch still up, can you place the big toe down and lift all the other four? Let's try it again. All the toes down but the big toe. 
Notice that one foot is a little more challenged, how it draws up and domes the arch. When the arch is up, place the big toe down and lift the other. This is something you could do a hundred times a day while you're sitting at the computer, while you're standing in line at the bank. You starting to feel that work? Might be a while before you get that coordination, but it'll start to help you figure out how to get this part of your arch strengthened for standing and walking. Another thing to do is to take just something very light like a dish towel, place it in front of you, and then let your toes gather the whole dish towel up. Yeah, scrunch, 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 yeah. And you do it until you had the whole towel your direction. So those are some of the things that we can do to start to activate the arch. But then we're going to want to take it now up to standing and see what you can do to build this strength of your arch and transfer it all the way up. Here we go. So we have our line drawn from the ankle to the inside of the point of the arch. So we're going to take something very simple that you'll have in your house and those are little magic markers and place them down and I want you to place that line that you drew right there underneath and stand on it. This should feel tender. Right there as you start to land all your weight into the marker, you're going to start to feel where you need to line up and stand in your foot. So you're not so far back, you're not so far forward, but right there on that little marker. I do a little sway side to side. You can kind of feel, woo on that foot a little different than this one. We're gathering a lot of information about ourselves as we're also warming up. Once we have stood there, if you step back just a little bit off the marker. That should be a little bit clearer to you in your awareness about where you want to transfer your weight. Taking a ball, like we did a moment ago sitting, and placing that also right underneath, get your weight so you can transfer it all the way onto the ball. You're still using your balance with the other foot, but you can start a little pulse. You're feeling the weight now go on the outside edge, on the inside edge, and begin to notice from here in your foot, can you feel it transfer up your knee, up into your hip? If you have collapsed arches or no energy, the weight has been transferring outside line only and no transferring into the doming of your arch which will help you transfer up into your hip. So we're waking that up by letting the ball get inside that area and pouring a little on the inside, a little on the outside. If this is too tender, take some of the weight off and go slower. All different size balls can work. So find the ball in your house at a drugstore. Get a tennis ball, that'll be a little harder. Get a soft ball. For a little more money, you can buy something called a foot saver. It has a doming place that you also can begin to stand on, roll around. Because it's flat, you don't have to worry about balance. This is something while you're at the computer sitting, you can also just begin to let your foot find a lot of different ways to open up all the articulations of the bone. Even though we're interested in this one line, we need the whole foot to wake up because when you walk and transfer your weight through a rolling through a foot, you have to have the whole foot awake, movable. So find all the little tender spots wake up all the little places of motion. We could also go to a roller. Here's another roller that's flat on the bottom so I don't have to work about balance. As I transfer my weight to stand on that roller, I'm finding all the angles to start to warm up. Even though I'm thinking about my foot, I'm also noticing what lines are tight, what's getting stretched all the way through my body feet at the same time, save you a little time. But any balance issues, just use one. 
So these are all things to do to start to activate the muscles, warm up the muscles before we go to the yoga toes scrunching to strengthen. So finally, we're going to look at a whole strengthening, not just for the foot, but to build up the connection of how you can transfer all the way through your hips, your legs, and take it into walking. So, I have a TheraBand here that helps me hold my legs into place. If you tend to be collapsed arch, tendencies often is to turn the legs out because you don't have the arch support. So we're going to want to get a little more parallel but not collapse in. Pull my legs up again so you can see. If you're collapsed in, your knees will want to kiss. So how do we open so the knees still track over your first two toes? So I'm going to take this TheraBand, I'm going to put it around the tops of my knees so that I can begin to push the outer thighs in. So right here is a great place to do your toe yoga again because if you're on the outside edges of your feet when you go out here, you're going to want to try to put that big toe down. Lift that arch while you're still pressing back. Yeah, so toe yoga. Yeah. Then stretch all your toes forward and as you bend your knees just a little bit, let's see if they're tracking over the first two toes or if they've collapsed. So we're going to open it up so that the activation of the inner thigh, sort of like a bellow in a fireplace, goes, knees over the first two toes. The thing here, even though we're interested in the feet, is how do we get the glutes strong enough to absorb the load instead of through your heel, getting all the pounding and inflammation. So we're gonna do some basic squats, and then we're also gonna do some calf raises to try to strengthen how when you walk or run or climb steps that you're developing a transferring of weight all the way through. So with a yoga block between my ankles to make sure that I don't roll to the outside and squeeze it between my ankles, the TheraBand I push out with my legs, then I'm just going to take my hips way back like I'm trying to sit so far back. You could also pretend you're a kangaroo and you have a long, long tail with big, strong haunches. And then as I come up, I'm going to press down into the floor to come up. You could just do the squats or you could take a set of, you're going to squat back. As you come up, squeeze that yoga block and calf raise, spreading all 10 toes. Get the block there to activate and come back down. Soften your ankles as you go back down, not forward, making sure the knees are over the toes, not pushed all the way through. And we go back again. This is also something to pay attention to. Are you a little more on one leg, a little more on the other? Because one foot could be taking a lot more of the loading. And we come up and then we calf raise again. Squeeze the yoga block and go up and down. Obviously you could just do calf raise or you could just sit back. This starts to give us a lot of strength so that when we go into normal walking that we're using this strength here to push through, right? So that I'm not just hitting my foot on the ground but that as I take a step I use this glute to push me through, which helps me roll through my foot. So all those articulations we did, like an animal pawing, is in the foot, but the strength is in your hips. Push. Yeah, from the side, I could either hit or I could step and push through. Push through. And then it helps me peel off my foot like a good animal, peeling off. Good strong hips like a kangaroo ready to spring into life. And when I land, just like with all this play, I'm landing with absorbing quality. I'm walking into life, ready to live it. So that's all for now from Rebecca and Good Old Dog, hoping that your plantar fasciitis goes away and stays away. One more note, when we're 
for taking care of ourselves, sometimes there can be a little irritation in the process of getting healthy. So don't forget, if you feel a little sore, whether it's in your foot, your knee, icing is a really good thing to do. You could take a bucket of water and stick your foot in it, you could put an ice bag on it, you could freeze a, a bottle of water and roll your foot on it. But do remember to take care. And don't forget to roll out any of the muscles at any time with a roller or a stick to help things let go. Because as we get strong, we need to go slow and to pay attention. That's all for now.